Well, going right back to 64 when we met them on that British tour, so we were with them like two months. We all travelled on the bus in those days, like the Dick Clark tours. So we were all together. And we got on great with all, those guys and us, somehow or other, got on great, you know. And it was like a friendship thing, and Mick Avery and Dave Davis would come, they loved our band. We were no threat to those guys, because we weren't in the charts, and the other band, bands on the tour were chart bands. We were the opening band, a bit like uh, Chicago was the um, G Jimmy Gershaw band, wasn't it? That they, they backed everybody on the Dick Clark tours. Well, that's what we were like. But that wasn't the only reason we got on socially. And then uh, through the 60s, we did the other, odd other gig opening for the Kinks and stayed friends. And Mick Avery and Dave Davis would come to our gigs, local London club gigs, and sit in. Anyway, that's part of the reason of staying in contact. But when Argent split, they happened to need a bass player for a tour. So I get the call because they know me. I'm similar age. They assume I can do the gig. They want someone who can sing a bit for harmony and stuff like that. And at the time, I'm midway through an album with, as Argent split, Bob Henry, the drummer, John Berity, the guitar player, and me formed Phoenix, which it was a bit like we, we saw a Grand Punk Railroad and thought, we'll do a British version. But as we formed, punk exploded in this country and we were like dinosaurs, you know, forget it. And we're in the middle of a second album with CBS and I get a phone call from the Kinks office, can you do, are you available for a tour in the States, March, March 78. So I have a word with the other guys and they say, yeah, go and do it. So we'd start the American tour. It was just for the tour, you know. Andy Parle had left, I think, and I just said, well, I love this, you know. I really thought, this is really happening, you know. I knew the guys, but I hadn't played with them. And typical Ray Davis, no meeting, no serious sit-down discussion. We're in Brussels, Belgium. We had to fly over, do one gig, and go back to the tour. And I'm walking down the street, day off, and he's walking the other way. He crosses over and comes to me and says, Jim, um, any chance we could make it permanent? I said, oh, I'll sort it out. <laughs> and that's the way you, things happen with Ray, you know, it's just off the cuff with him. Now, of all the Kinks records, when you listen to the Kinks, your bass, to my ears anyway, was the most prominent. So what, did you, what do you feel you as a bass player uh, brought to the Kinks. Obviously you followed Peter, you had to do some of Peter's parts, and there's John Dalton before you, and Andy who was sort of an intermediate studio guy. But what did you bring as a bass player? Because I remember the first record you did was Low Budget. That's right. right. And it was, the bass was very prominent in that. So. I've been through, you know, I'm one of the first generation English bass players, really. Because we, we you know, 50s starting just listening to you guys over in America, then evolving through what I did with jazz, with Argent. You know, when I listen back to what I did with Argent, it was because I was listening to Jack Bruce, Chris Squire, and the other guys way beyond my capabilities. But I was trying to be <sighs> adventurous and like, as well as keeping a musical picture, so that I'm doing the bass role. Get to the Kinks. And straight away I realised, look, you've just got to underpin the riffs. Those classics from the 60s, or even stuff through Village Green, or um, uh, Sleepwalker was the album that I was, I came in to promote over there. And it soon became apparent that, to my ears, a lot of the production with the Kinks had not featured Dave enough in the last, I mean, the sound of his guitar and the right. prominence. So, obviously, playing with the bass, mixed bass drum, which is, you know, it's an early thing we all learn as bass players. Tighten the whole thing up. But Dave, I, I always felt Dave needs to be brought out more. And so I would make sure I was smacking with Dave's riffs and not getting in the way of his riffs. And I think I brought, I think I brought a bit of balance to the band. Just trying to, what bass players do, they listen to everyone and. You tread your path carefully, especially with a hard rock band with two guitars. They're the main things. And that's a balance, I think.